I want to emphasize that no offense is intended towards anyone's faith or beliefs. The purpose of this was purely educational and for entertainment. I have a question for you. Is this an alien or an angel? What about this? Okay, last one. How about this? Before I tell you the answer, you can pause the video and comment on what your answers are. No cheating. The answer to those questions are angels, aliens, and angels. If you got all three correct, which I highly doubt, kudos to you. If you got two of them correct, nice job. And if you got nothing, well, also nice job. If anything, you passed the test and the point I was trying to prove. You see, there is a growing consensus that what we've been tagging as aliens could be angels instead. And there's the other group of people that are also saying that what we call angels are nothing more than advanced alien civilization, sparking up a debate that could last a century. So instead of saying English or Spanish, the question is aliens or angels? According to the Book of Enoch that was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls, there were 200 fallen angels called the Watchers, who split from other angels and came all the way to Earth to satisfy their sexual desires. Now you might say this story is taken from the Book of Enoch, which is filled with so much controversy and not accepted in the Christian faith. And while you are right about that, the Bible itself also talks of such stories in Genesis 6. These angels, on getting to Earth, seduced women and had sexual intercourse with them. This was against the divine rules. It's the same way we humans frown on people who have sex with animals. It's just wrong and sickening. This book also talks about the weird hybrid giants who became the unholy offsprings of this union, also known as the Nephilim. And to show that this is more than just a story, there have been discoveries of gigantic skulls all over the world, as well as giant skeletons that can't be explained. There are a lot of them in archaeological records, and some were written down by reputable scientists before it became common in the late 1900s to hide the proof and act like they don't exist. Now you have to watch YouTube videos like us to tell you the truth, since big media corporations won't. These discoveries were hidden by mainstream archaeology and media because it doesn't want to admit that they had lost the fight to prove the theory of evolution, even though these discoveries and a lot of other evidence show that it is false. But I digress. Over the years, people, and that includes me, couldn't help but wonder if what people say they saw as aliens could be nothing more than angels, or what if angels were aliens? It became a classic question of which came first, the chicken or the egg? One thing is certain, and is agreed by almost everyone in every field of study, and that is humanity got a big boost in advanced knowledge that revolutionized the entire human race. And that is kind of a fact. We were once dumb, couldn't figure stuff out, like hunters and gatherers, and then in one minute, we weren't. And now we're doing space exploration with a chance of planet colonization. There was no gradual process to enlightenment, which was just strange. There are theories that this advanced knowledge of how to do all these things was passed down to us either by fallen angels or aliens. Let's look at the latter and start from the beginning. About 50,000 years ago, an advanced society called the Sumerians appeared out of nowhere on Earth. They had advanced science, math, astronomy, a legal system, farming, and other things. And with this knowledge, changed and influenced everything on Earth. Sumer was a society that lasted from about 4100 BCE to 1750 BCE. They were one of the first people to keep track of time in hours and minutes. They also had a complex religion with gods called the Anunnaki. The Sumerians believed that the Anunnaki were gods with power over their lives. In many stories, members of the Anunnaki were seen judging people. The Anunnaki is a very interesting mythology but there is a part of this story, or myth, that isn't told that much to people, probably because if people found out, it would change everything and shatter beliefs. There is a story that the Anunnaki were not gods or divine beings, but rather normal advanced beings that came from another world to Earth. In other words, aliens. They came from a strange planet to Earth for something, and once they got it, they zoomed off. 
It turns out they didn't come to Earth to share their wisdom and prosperity with humans just because they like us. Instead, they came to Earth to make humans slaves that would dig gold for them. Apparently, gold wasn't just the most valuable metal in the world. It was the most valuable metal in the solar system. Gold was plentiful on Earth, and the Anunnaki somehow got that information that we have a lot of it from the millions of probes sent out all over the galaxies. So they bred humans as a slave race to work the mines and provide this said gold to them so as to save their planet from destruction. It was like the aliens in three-body problem. And here's the strange thing that may keep some people up. According to both ancient tablets and NASA, the planet that is said to belong to the Anunnaki does exist. It's known as the Twelfth Planet, but both the Sumerians and the Anunnaki called it Nibiru. I brought this story up for one reason, and that's because almost everything about the event of the fallen angels that was written in the Bible also occurred and corresponded with this alien race's story. There were a lot of similar events between the Anunnaki and the fallen angels. The Anunnaki gave humans skill sets like medicine, astronomy, mining, weapons making, and so on, which is exactly what the fallen angels were said to have done too. In such, that was how they were able to seduce the women and be accepted, by providing knowledge that was too great for mankind. The Anunnaki also slept with humans, which was against the rules as it was strictly forbidden. This union also gave rise to children who were extremely powerful and monster-like. These offsprings were also a race of giants. They were cruel and brutal. They tormented and tortured humans, and in many cases, they ate them. There is a Nephilim episode link in the description below, where we deep dive into it. And lastly, we have the Flood. The Flood was also recorded, but not because of divinity like it was in the Bible, but as a result of a cataclysmic event. The Anunnaki knew a cataclysmic event was coming. They had seen it destroy a lot of planets and lives due to the planet's gravitational force being affected, so they started preparing for their evacuation. And when they were done, and with enough gold for their planets, they left the humans to their fate. This is just one tale. There were multiple tales from various cultures all over the world that we could literally spend a whole day looking at how eerily similar these beings are. For instance, there are many passages in the old Hindu texts, called Vedic texts, that talk about gods riding and flying chariots or machines. Now, already that sounds like it might be aliens, right? The way the machines are described and the gods are pictured are both very interesting. Also, the Vimana or flying chariots that the first witnesses saw were definitely not made by any society on Earth. That was not something that people could have done at that time. They were writing about events that happened 8,000 to 9,000 years before their own time, during the Vedic era, which ran from 1500 BC to 500 BC. Things like this are why I and a lot of people can't help but wonder if what we call angels or demigods aren't just aliens. And I'm sorry to say, in a way, they are. Let me explain before you bring the pitchfork. What does the term alien actually mean? It means foreign, unfamiliar, unknown, and so on. And I gotta say, angels fit that category perfectly. Angels and even demons are not of this world. They occasionally come from another dimension or world to carry out a task, and once they are done, they go back to where they came from. I know most of us watching are like, but angels are human-like. You are right, they are. Abraham met with three angels that were in human form, as well as his cousin Lot. But here's the thing, those are the ones we know of. The other types of angels we also know of are the ones with wings. Technically speaking, these are angels, but these are not the only categories of angels we have. That's like saying the world is filled with only Asians, when there are, of course, different races all over the world. It's the same with angels, and thanks to advancements in AI, if we were to recreate some of the visions of angels exactly as described by some of the prophets in the Bible, they'd look like this. This is what the media says the cherubim and the seraphim look like. This is what the Bible says. I don't know about you, but there's nothing human in comprehension about that being. Just look at this ethereal, staggering image. This is a poster child for the word alien. I would go insane if I saw something like this. 
To even prove my point further, there is a famous case of UFO description in the Bible from the prophet Ezekiel. This was taken from Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 15 to 27. 15. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. 16. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel, and they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. 17. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. 18. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four. 19. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them, and when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. 20. Whithersoever the spirit was to go, they went, thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. 21. When those went, these went, and when those stood, these stood, and when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them, for the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. 22. And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads above. 23. And under the firmament were their wings straight, the one toward the other. Every one had two, which covered on this side, and every one had two, which covered on that side, their bodies. 24. And when they went, I heard the noise of their wings, like the noise of great waters, as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, as the noise of an host. When they stood, they let down their wings. 25. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings. 26. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. 27. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. I don't know how Ezekiel stayed sane after witnessing all that. The part of the wheels, if we were to get an accurate picture of that, it would look like this. And it just so happens that UFO ships are also kinda alike in the same shape. One thing I came across during one of my UFO research was the term ultra-terrestrial. We know of extraterrestrials which are basically beings from other planets that are here on Earth. Ultra-terrestrial, on the other hand, believe that these beings or aliens come from other dimensions that are living alongside our own. Basically, one belief centers around the same universe but different planets, while another is centered around a different universe altogether. Some believe that's why it's easier for aliens to come and go as they please, without tripping our trillion dollar surveillance systems. This solves the problem of faster than light travel for alien encounters, because it turns out they didn't need to travel that far. They simply were already here or just jumped from another dimension. In many UFO reports I've covered, some of the witness statements talk about strange creatures coming out from portals, and then after a while disappearing. One minute they were here, and the next minute they were gone. That could also explain the time differences and the missing report statements of UFO abductees. Maybe the reason these abductees couldn't be found easily, and without tracks for that matter, was simply because they weren't in this universe to begin with. Plus, time over there in their dimensions could be different from how time works here. An hour there could be 10 days here. Even the Bible talks of these great time differences in 2 Peter 3, verse 8. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Time exists on another level in these dimensions, be it with aliens or with angels. And it's in this second theory that angels, or in this case, fallen angels, fall into. They appear, do what they are sent to do, and then disappear. 
So that could mean that the aliens you are seeing could be angels, or even demons. And this is not just what I think. Look up the Air Force Project Blue Book. This is a study that was made public by the Freedom of Information Act on UFOs or aliens. They came to the conclusion that after studying multiple exhaustive reports and encounters that these beings were certainly ultra-terrestrial, and not extraterrestrial as the whole world thought. In other words, they are a much more advanced society or civilization that coexists with us. And maybe why we can't actually pinpoint their location is because they probably live in a 5D world while we are stuck in 3D. I mean, think of it. Heaven and hell are just planets too. A location. A place. So what's to say they can't easily troop in from their 5D environment to ours to say hi? But if you still have some doubts, let's take a little detour to India. The seventh book of the Sanskrit epic Mahabharata is called the Drona Parva, and it tells of a terrible time when everything was destroyed. It was said to be a single bolt that came down from the sky and quickly engulfed animals in fire, melting metal armor to the skin of soldiers and being as bright as gazing at a thousand suns. It caused a great crimson cloud, and from that, many weapons fell, winged with gold and thousands of thunderbolts. Some creative scholars think it might be a picture of an ancient nuclear attack. Definitely not a weapon made by people 11,000 years ago for sure. Then what could it have been? Descriptions of other events witnessed and described in the texts provide some clues. Different pictures of gods and fighters flying through the sky and heavens show central orbs with energy lines that sometimes go in a circle and sometimes go off to one side or the other. If you are quick, by just mentioning orbs, you can already start remembering some alien stories told by witnesses saying they also saw orbs during their encounters. There is a reason I'm telling this story. You see, there is a real documented destruction of the Harappan culture and their city of Mohenjo-Daro in the Indus Valley, which is around the time of the fiery cataclysm described in the Sanskrit epic. The Harappan culture, or the Indus Valley Civilization, was one of the biggest of the four ancient civilizations that were there, the others being Egypt, Mesopotamia, and China. The Harappan culture made a lot of important technological improvements. For example, their systems and tools for measuring length and mass were very accurate for a civilization in 3300 BC. With their dockyards, granaries, warehouses, brick platforms, and protective walls, the Harappan showed how advanced their building was. To give you an insight into how good these people are, the sewers and drainage systems that were built and used in towns across the ancient Indus than those found in most cities in the Middle East today, especially in many parts of Pakistan and India today. The reason I tagged the Middle East is because the Harappan culture lived in the Middle East. Its site spanned a large area that included much of modern-day Pakistan, northwestern India, and northeast Afghanistan. But sadly, this culture died out, and not in a nice way. Turns out, they were destroyed by a fiery cataclysm. And we got a lot of proof of this catastrophic demise in the form of melted glass, which is similar to trinitite. Trinitite is the glass that forms when a nuclear weapon is detonated close to sand. It was found after the first Trinity test of the first atomic bomb. So is this an old alien war with nukes, with Earth as the battlefield? It's possible that the first impact happened between 13,000 and 11,000 years ago, which is around the time of several events around the world that changed the course of human history, and probably put an end to some modern cultures, like the Harappan and, more surprisingly, the Clovis culture of the Americas. Some theories speculate aliens had a battle of some sort. Then there was a second disaster that was like the first, but it only happened in the area around an old city that is now called Tel El Haman, or as by the name you know famously as Saddam and Gomorrah in the Bible. And that's why I told this story. This is just another example of how aliens, demigods, and angels have intertwined in the descriptions given by men. The Bible talks about a fiery death for Sodom and Gomorrah for their sins. The Indias talk about a warfare between gods, and some think it is an alien warfare. 
either way, there was proof of this destruction in the demise of a civilization, and you're just left to wonder on who to attribute the cause to. So, to answer your questions, are aliens just angels or demons poorly described, or are there actual aliens different from angels? First, let's agree on what we mean when we talk about aliens. Anything that belongs to a foreign territory is a good way to describe an alien. A person who lives in a country but is not a member of that country is called an alien. Plant and animal species that are new to an area are often called invasive species. When we talk about aliens coming to Earth, an alien could be any being that is not from Earth. Beings who deal with our world spiritually, like aliens and demons, could be included in that group, and the Bible makes it clear that these people exist. Angels and devils are called aliens because they are not from Earth. So, yes, in a way, the Bible does have aliens, and they come from a spiritual world or another dimension, aka ultra-terrestrial. It is possible for someone to have a demonic experience and think it was an alien. It is also possible for someone to have an experience with an angel and also think it was an alien. Hebrews 13 says that angels have interacted with people without them knowing. So, it's very possible. And with the notion of fallen angels included, I can't help but think, maybe, just maybe, aliens and fallen angels are just two sides of the same coin. And if it is, that means we as a human race are in for a ride for eternity.